Hello and welcome to Can TV Conversations. I'm Shaz Parani. Today we're talking about the recent success of a young star on the rise on the ATP Tennis Tour. Joining me today is Hubert Hurkac. He's currently ranked 16th in the world on the professional men's ATP Tennis Tour. Thank you for being with us today. No, thank you for having me here with you guys. Thank you. So I want to start to begin with congratulating you on your first ATP Masters 1000 title at the Miami Open and also becoming the first men's player from Poland to win one. So what emotions were you going through and what has been the response back home in Poland? Thank you so much. I mean, that was that was very emotional for me. I was so, so happy and, and proud of me as well, what I've achieved. And uh, yeah, the reaction was, was pretty big here in Poland. I mean, I got so many messages uh, congratulating me, the result. And uh, that gives like uh, also like extra extra motivation to, to work even harder and to, to achieve, uh, achieve big results. Yeah, definitely. And you did what you performed really well there. And then you had a quick turnaround right after going straight into the Monte Carlo Masters. Uh, now the clay court season has begun. So what can you really take away from Monte Carlo going for the rest of the clay court season? Yeah, I need to I need to spend a little more time on uh, on clay court to prepare and be ready. So so my game, uh, I'm I'm playing my A game because because uh, like winning every single match on on this level is is a big challenge. So if you if you don't perform at your hundred percent, the the other guy will get you. Right, definitely. And clay is that one surface where you just have to be there all day long, and it's very grinding. So. It's, I'm excited for you to get on through clay court. So you, just a few numbers for you. So you ended 2017 ranked 238, 2018 ranked 86, and since you've been sitting around the 30s to 40 range, you finally broke through the top 20 recently after the Miami Open. So what specifically about your game over the past few years has helped you get to this point? Yeah, I think I was just trying to to, to be committed to to work hard every single day with my coach Greg Boyton, which is uh, I mean he's like amazing help and, and big inspiration for for me and uh, what he does. So that's uh, the the work that we're we're putting in every single day that that uh, that paid off. Right, definitely, and you see, you're seeing the results. And so going forward, uh, what can you improve in your game for the future? And where do you see yourself in a few years? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm gonna try to, to improve as much as I can. I think my my serve still can get better, return, and uh, obviously my my knowledge about the game, my uh, my decisions in the in the critical moments of the game that, that I think that uh, that can still improve and uh, just just overall, I think I can I can improve still a lot of a lot of things. Right, and you talk about those critical decisions, and as a former tennis player, we understand the physicality of the game but also how crucial is the mental aspect, especially being a young star in, on the tour? Yeah, I mean, like uh, physically and mentally, you need to stay, stay tough, especially the, 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 second, the, the second thing, the, the mental thing. I mean, here they're like, if you, if you slow down for a moment or you have like a couple of, of bad decisions uh, the, the the opponent's gonna get you and now is the what you're gonna do after are you gonna to to start thinking about the the next point or or just like focus on on the mistakes that you did because because uh, if you do so then then the score can quickly get away from you right yeah and that's that's just uh, beauty about tennis is being that mental warrior and being out there all the time. So is there someone on tour besides someone that's not on your team that has really helped you in this de uh, development process, like being out there hitting with you or just someone, maybe a friend on the tour? Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously trying to, to look, at, look at other players as well to, to see what they what they do right, how, how they achieve their, their, their success and just try to like uh, see and watch, watch them on TV. It's not something like specific, but just trying to, to, to learn uh, every single day something uh, to, to be a better, better player and a person. Definitely, yeah. And so you've been able to compete against the big three a few times, Roger Federer, Nadal, and Djokovic. So what really differentiates these guys from the rest of the field? We've seen them dominate the game for so many years. So as someone who's been able to see them firsthand and play against them, what really is the difference between them and the rest of the tennis field? Yeah, I think it's a little bit in the, in the mental part, the, their experience, 
what they have achieved and uh, and how mentally tough they are so that's uh, the, the they're not easy to to beat and they don't want to be beaten they're they're super competitive very professional and uh, like they they just work hard every single day so so the the, the younger young, younger guys needs to they need to to still improve and and they get the uh, see that and uh, have a little bit more belief in themselves so so to, to to be able to to beat those top guys and out of those three who do you think is probably the toughest to face i mean uh Recent, recently, Ars Novak for sure. I mean, uh, what he has uh, showed uh, the the last couple of years, not <laughs> not losing many matches. Uh, so so obviously, I mean, Roger Roger has been out for for a little bit. So so that doesn't help him. But but I mean, like he's what he has achieved and and uh, still uh, fighting for the for the biggest trophies on tour. And uh, obviously, Rafa Rafa on clay court. He's uh, He's just just amazing there. So, so you need to you need to have a really good day to to be very competitive with them, and and then to beat them, you you need to do something special. Right. And what is that something special? Like we see you guys playing out there. What's that little thing or difference that will get you to that point? Yeah, I mean, I think that that extra belief, that uh, that extra motivation to. Just, uh, <laughs> I mean, just like to, to be able to, to stay stay committed to, to your game plan, stay on your 100% level and uh, don't drop that level because if you drop it for a moment, then, then it can uh, quickly uh, quickly run away from you. So you just need to be like on, on point for the, for the whole match. Right, yeah, we've seen guys like Rafa come back from two sets down and just blow through the rest of the match. It's incredible. But... So just a few uh, interesting questions for you. So I've heard from a friend of yours that you love cars. So what is your dream car? Well, I mean, I, I love cars. I, I, I love uh, I, uh, I love really like uh, quick cars as well. So I mean, the, the, the companies like, like McLaren, like, uh, I mean, like Koenigsegg as well, BMW. I mean, I love, uh, really, really enjoy cars and, and look at them and, and sometimes drive, drive inside them. Definitely. And all those big Grand Slams have those cars coming with them. So, I mean, if you win the U.S. Open, you get a beautiful yeah. car. <laughs> so going up in the U.S. Open, what is your favorite tournament to play at, Grand Slam or any regular tournament besides the Miami Open, of course? Mm. <laughs> yeah, of course, Miami Open, but I, I love as well Indian Wells. I think that the, the, that place is really, really great. Unfortunately, hopefully this year, maybe at the towards the end of the year, we'll be able to, to compete there. That, that would be something amazing. And uh, yeah, the Grand Slams are, are, are special, but apart from Grand Slams, the, the, I enjoy a lot of tournaments, some of the, the European tournaments. I mean, Monte Carlo is, is, is a beautiful place and, uh, and it's obviously it's uh, nice when the, when the fans are around and they're supporting, they're enjoying the matches. That's, uh, that's, that's awesome. Right. And what, what Grand Slam has the loudest and craziest fans? I've seen videos of everyone. I've been to the US Open, but never been to the other three. So from your perspective, which one's like the rowdiest? The loudest. The loudest could be could be U.S. Open. Every single slam is is very special. I mean, Australia is uh, it's amazing. They they really love tennis there. I mean, French Open, of course, uh, the the French people really enjoy tennis, and it's, uh, it's a special moment in the in the year. And Wimbledon playing on on grass courts that's uh, that's like so so classic as well. And and uh, I mean, super super nice to to be able to play on on such a surface. And the, the courts are really really prepared amazingly. Definitely, Wimbledon's a classic. Well. I want to thank you so much for being with us today, and my thanks to Hubert Hurkacz for joining us today to have this important conversation. And thank you thank for you watching. So thank, thank you for watching Can TV Conversations. I'm Shaz Prani, and you guys have a good day.